Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. Um, Orchid Society meeting last night, um, for me, was a repeat talk. Um, it was the same talk that was done a couple of weeks ago at the Wessex Orchid Society and now repeated at the Bournemouth Orchid Society. But I managed to stay awake, <laughs> especially as it was a non-orchid subject. It was about um, carnivorous plants. Um, Interesting nonetheless, and I must say I was impressed because the talk at Wessex a few weeks ago was a bit scattery, um, didn't seem to flow very well. But the same slideshow and the same speaker dramatically improved last night, I must admit, um, considerably better. So I don't know whether the guy had some adverse comments and took them on board, but whatever. It was a much better talk last night. Um, I, was say, I managed to stay awake through a repeat talk as well, um, as, especially as they were so close together. You know, I was expecting to be bored, but um, nonetheless, the interest was held. Not um, a great attendance last night, I must admit. A lot of people had serious traffic hassles trying to get there and arrived late, um, in <laughs> including the people doing the raffle, which is not good for them to arrive late. You know, there's certain, when you go to an Orchid society, society meeting, there are what I call key members that just need to be there. I'm now one of them, unfortunately, because I'm custodian of the sound system. Um, and obviously, you know, anybody who's talking has got a roving mic so that everybody can hear them. And the speaker gets one of those um, headsets with a microphone. All that has to be set up and everything. So, um, yeah, I'm one of those key people now, which is a bit of a nuisance. But I agreed to do it on the grounds I don't miss meetings. I'm not one of those that just doesn't turn up. Um, or turns up now and again. I'm there every time. It would take a pretty serious illness to stop me getting there. And I don't get ill anyway, you know. <laughs> the worst I ever get is a sniffly cold, and that only usually lasts a couple of days. So as long as my back holds up, which it's been doing since my last severe episode, which you all heard about, um, yeah, it hasn't done that since, uh, which is good, because that really is debilitating to say the least. <laughs> it's one of those, old, well it's an old injury for me, so I mean it's, uh, there's nothing can be done about it apart from just be careful and be aware of what sets it off, which is just not concentrating, you know, picking up something without getting head on to it, straight on, you know, and re remember to bend your legs, not your back and all that sort of stuff. And don't lift stuff that's too heavy, get somebody else to do it. <laughs> um, Massive watering session yesterday, at, well, mounts, um, but one of those watering sessions where I don't just try and get the watering done and get out. It was one of those where I thought I'd have a look at stuff and see how it's progressing. So we'll have a look at a couple of those things. And the first thing is, <coughs> you, um, you know I haven't had this very long. This is my Brassavola Little Stars. Um, and when I got it, um, it had a damaged new growth and another new growth that um, potentially was damaged. Well, it turned out it was. Um, but we do have new roots starting to grow, which I'm pleased about. That's good. But when I got it, it had two spikes, one of which I assumed had blasted, and one didn't look like it was going to grow. Um, now, I've got very poor light at the moment, but let's make sure I'm in focus. If you look center shot now, that spike is moving. That's the one I didn't think was going to grow, but it is. It's only growing a little bit, but it's green and it looks like it's going to push on. And then over here, we've got a new spike and that's on an old cane. That wasn't there before. And then, oh, I don't know whether I can get at this one. You'll have to look sort of through the plant. It's the, it's the, it's the pseudo bulb towards the back. And that spike just looked brown, but it, does look like it's extending now so we've definitely got that one is new so that's going to grow that one looks like it's starting to grow and the one up the back there is certainly larger than it used to be so i'm pretty sure i will get some blooms down the line on that now <clears throat> i mean it's just starting to show signs of picking up um so it's got over its um culture shock of changing its uh habitat and um 
most of the good roots when I mounted this were round the back of the plant so they're against the mount under the moss. Now I don't see any signs of those extending out you know beyond the moss yet um, but we do have quite a good few new roots starting now in some older places and um, yeah so it, it's, it's going to make it, it's going to grow so that, that, that's to come down the line and um, I've been after a little stars for a long time simply because other peoples that I've seen on YouTube videos seem to grow like weeds just seems to have incredible vigor in it compared with some of the other brassavolas so um, looking forward to that one um, pushing on I mean it's not going to start pushing up masses of new growths probably until we get into the spring you know and it starts getting the temperatures back and the longer natural daylight so that, that should be good um, my dendrobium conico which is a victoria regina crossed with um come on brain goldsmithianum um, blooms are lasting well and i love the color it's um it's a good color uh, I'm well pleased with that little cluster, but what I'm more pleased about is the sheer number of new growths I've got on this. Um, so I haven't had this plant too long, and, and it's just burst into growth. Um, all of these canes are still growing. You know, there's no terminal leaves on any of these. They're still extending, so these should get to a good length, and um, you know they will become the blooming canes probably late next year or maybe even into the next year I haven't had it long enough to get its growth cycle yet but it is one of those that tends to bloom on the deciduous canes I just need don't know yet whether that's a one-year cycle or a two-year cycle they do vary dendrobiums um, the other thing I was looking at is this um, epidendrum nocturnum where the actual bloom decided to self-pollinate so we still didn't get to see it properly but it is forming a seed pod um, and my theory is to leave it there on the grounds that if the plant appreciates the fact that it's managed to produce some seeds its subsequent blooms may not self-pollinate and we have got one pushing on now um, there's also a slight branch on there so now this is an old spike um, I didn't know that old spikes could start to grow again on this, um, but they did. So, I mean, this was its first attempt at blooming. That self-pollinated <laughs> overnight. I didn't even get to see it properly. But that's now started to grow. So um, it's certainly not one to take the cane back. And even this one with the seed pod has started to grow again. So it's, it's now getting more opportunities to get a bloom to hang in there <laughs> and actually open properly so that we can get to see it and boy am i looking forward to that the new cane on it's still growing um so that's uh, extending nicely so that's good uh what else was there oh this this has been missed um because it's in a pot um my pots aren't getting watered that frequently so although i updated my notes a while ago to say it was in bud I hadn't realized how much is it, it was extending, um, but it's hiding at the moment. It's down in here. And these buds are pushing on nicely. There's only two, um, but this one hasn't bloomed for me before. This is a Latoria type. It's Dendrobium. Um, oh, come on, brain. Alexandria. Um, and just looking at the buds, I've got a feeling this is going to be a greeny color with markings. Um, but the buds, you know, looking at the size of the buds, they're going to be reasonable sized blooms. So that's uh, something to look forward to. Um, I mean, this, this Latoria is a mass of blooms. This is doing well. And I brought this down lower simply because the blooms look best from above. They are still interesting inside. Um, but nonetheless, their best patterning is viewed from above. So I've got three Latorias out at the moment. The other two are up here. This one looks like it's just starting to go now. This is the Nora Tokanago cross with Ar Aberans. And my Rhodostictum's now got all its blooms open on this spike. Um, I love these blooms. I just love the shape. Um, it's one of those that you need to lift up to look at properly. But that is an interesting shaped orchid and beautiful patterning on the lip. Apart from that, it's basically pure white. 
Um, but yeah, that's um, again for such a small plant. You know, the, 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 these are unusual canes. They really are skinny at the base, and then a large bulbous part followed by the leaves, and then the spikes come out the top. But this other spike over here has come off of an old cane that's leafless and has already bloomed. So um, that I didn't know it was going to do. So we've got more buds to come on that one. Um, that's the three Latorias out in bloom. Um, my Catlia cernua, um, I've moved this down from up in the roof simply because I can now see it better down here. And I need to see this. It's, it, it, it's looking good. And um, I'm hoping to actually take this to our Christmas do because we still have the competition tables and everything at the Christmas do. And, um, I've, you know, there's enough buds on this to make this look good because at the moment it's a little out of balance. We've got blooms over on the left and then blooms over on the right. But looking round, you know, we've got some blooms to open in the centre, yeah? So with the cooler temperatures, I'm hoping these blooms last long enough. The Christmas dew's on the 15th, so it's got to hang in there for two weeks and still look good. <laughs> and if it does, I'm going to take it along. Um, I would definitely take that Catlia if it lasted. The simple reason I probably won't is that the, the leaves, you can't see them from here, but the leaves are very tatty on the older part of the plant. Um, and I don't think that the first um, spike that opened on the right is actually going to last another two weeks. I'll be very surprised if it does. Um, but if those blooms are still hanging in there, I may take it. But it, it would be a clumsy plant to transport in the car because it's so tall. You know, I mean, we're, you know, we're two and a half feet tall from the bottom of the pot to the top. And obviously, you know, things get bashed around trying to transport them. So, uh, you know, um, I may just keep it here. Um, I got a plant last night. Um, bearing in mind what the talk was about. It's not an orchid. And um, it's in this bag here. Let's get it out and have a look. Ugh. This was a spur of the moment purchase. And <laughs> on the way home in the car, I thought I'm going to have to say something about this because there's a, there could, it could generate worry in some instances. That's what it's going to. Let me just put the camera down a minute and I'll get it out. There we go then. Something completely different. <laughs> I just got a little spellbound by the coloration around here and the patterning. It, it truly is very, very pretty to look at. Now, whether I can grow this very well or not remains to be seen. Um, this is still relatively a young plant because I asked how big it was going to get, and he said if it's grown well, probably twice as tall as this and um, this is classed as an easy to grow type of um, Saracena so well we shall see <laughs> and I said um, you know because apparently these need a dormant period but I need I need to go and do a little bit of looking up on care for this I don't I, you know um, a total novelty for me at the moment um, but the patterning is just just gorgeous but, uh, I asked about um, what sort of low temperatures can this take and the guy just said just put it outside it'll be fine. So I said well even if it gets frozen he said yeah it'll be fine. But I'm going to take that with a pinch of salt. <laughs> we shall see. Um, but in theory this, this, this should die down. Um, why it hasn't died down yet I don't know. Um, and I don't know the consequences of not, a, not allowing it to become dormant. I don't know what would happen to it, whether it would lose its vigour or just completely die or what. So I've got a little bit of work to do, looking up, um, you know, what goes on. I'm not going to be able to pronounce what it actually is. I mean, its actual um, uh, variety is Saracena. I've got to work out what CV stands for. Cultivar. Possibly. Anyway, as I say, I've got to do a bit of work. But it's Bella, anyway. So we've got a Dracula Bella, now we've got a Saracena Bella. Uh, I'll think of somebody think up some new names. Um, but looking at the tag, um, 
This looks like it was Saracena cultivar Jutha tip sopa crossed with what is obviously a species, Saracena leucophila, probably. Anyway, you can read it just as well as I can, probably better. It's early in the day. So yeah, a new plant to uh, worry about, which I will go and look up and uh, get some care guides, you know, for the... What I need to do really is just look up that species and, and get a care guide for that. Um, uh, and I may be able to find out what went into the cultivar that, that the species have been crossed with in case there's any extreme deviation in the care that you know I then have to average the two together but um, yeah um, interesting little plant um, apparently will get taller than that and obviously clump up as time goes on we shall see yeah so uh, something interesting to add to the collection another a carnivorous plant now what I was going to say about possible worries is we all know about one very high profile YouTuber that used to do videos about orchids all the time and had a wonderful collection, lovely automated greenhouse and used to go round and know all the names of the plants and then these things started and they took over in my opinion and for me the channel has now become uninteresting because even when you do get a look round the greenhouse, the orchid names have just been forgotten. And if the tag can't be got at, then, you know, they're just brushed by to get to all the carnivorous plants, which the names are memorised totally. And, you know, so somebody's changed their tack along the way. That's not going to happen here. <laughs> I've got one. If it's successful, I may get a few more because they certainly add some interest. And these are great companion plants for orchids. But they're not going to take over, not, not in any shape or form. I was talking to one of the um, long-term growers because he was saying that he used to grow these and he had a lot more of these than he did orchids. But then his interest in the orchids took over and he eventually got rid of most of his carnivorous plants. So, um, you know, people do change their interest levels, but... Um, I don't think my interest level in the orchids is ever going to drop away such that another type of plant takes over. I don't think that's going to happen. Anyway, um, very interesting looking plant. <coughs> and as I said, the patterning is just gorgeous. So there we go, something new. See how we get on with that, try not to kill it and all that sort of stuff. And I'll see you next time. Yeah, I think that looks quite good tucked up in with the orchids. It needs to go nearer the glass because it needs incredibly bright light apparently. But um, Oh, and, and by the way, it was early in the day. Um, there is an eye in... Uh, it's not Saracen. <laughs> Saracenia. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> More coffee, nurse. Um, yeah, uh, I like it. Um, I don't like it enough for hundreds of them to take over my grow room. But I do think that a few of those dotted around, if I can be successful with them, would add some interest. Especially, I mean, some of them can grow, you know, over a metre tall. You can imagine sort of, you know, some pictures sticking up there. So. Anyway, so maybe a couple, but we'll see how we go. Um, again, it's more shelf space. But the problem I've got in my mind at the moment is this dormancy. I need to clarify that in my mind because if these really do need to get very chilled down, you know, down near the freezing point, then in this grow room they're not probably not going to go dormant and that may mean that I can't grow them very well. We'll have to wait and see. So I'm just hanging on to this cane here because I've just seen some buds on it. Well... Quite honestly, this uh, giant here, everything that's looked like a bud so far has actually turned into a kiki. So I don't think those are buds. It just it was just because it was right in my face at this point in time. So, uh, I mean, that really is the future of that dendrobium. I think that's Chrysium, is it? Something like that. Oh, has it got a tag? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Chrysium. Come on. Yeah, Chrysium. Um, so obviously its future is in all this new growth up here. Um, several of these um, shriveled canes on here have actually fallen off. Um, I had to have a good check round here to make sure there wasn't rot at the base. 
but um, it's very slow to push out a new root system, this one. It is. There's lots and lots of tiny little roots. And up in the moss, there's white bits showing, so it is extending a root system. But it's at the moment, for the size of the plant, that is an incredibly poor root system. Nonetheless, it's still doing that. So uh, the problem with these canes is there's an awful lot of them seem to have stopped growing. And if that's as long as they're going to get, that's nowhere near as long as they should be, and it means they're not going to arch over. They're going to stick out and be a nuisance. But time will tell. Some of them are still growing, but quite a few have reached their terminal leaf. Um, you know, that one obviously has. So, uh, <clears throat> and I can imagine that with that sheer volume of new growths and a poor, almost non-existent root system, that would reduce the vigour of those growths. It just wouldn't get enough feed and hydration in there. So, uh, you know, it may be that the next flush of growths will produce full length canes. But now that I can see a more active root system, it stands a better chance of growing longer canes. Um, but, um, yeah, we've got quite a few kikis to sort out. I mean, there's a lovely bunch there. Nice bunch of three that are growing on. <laughs> and these are still growing. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do have a lot of kikis on this plant, so they'll come off in the spring when they've got, um, you know, I mean, I need a root system better than that, really. For the size of the kiki, that's not enough root, so I need those to grow on a bit. And then quite a few of those can be taken off. Um, those will be available for someone who ever wants to have another <laughs> monster in their grow area. <laughs> we shall see. Um, anyway sidetracked again. See you next time.